So robotics. Um, I've alluded to this several times. I've never actually done research in robotics, but robots are really cool, and I think many people find them one of the most interesting parts of AI, or at least the most sort of viscerally exciting. Um, so robotics brings together lots of different areas of AI. So it combines, if you have a robot that can understand language, it combines speech recognition, speech understanding, and speech synthesis, so being able to talk back. Does motion and planning, as I mentioned. Um, usually they need some sort of machine learning to be able to figure out how to move about in the world. It's actually pretty hard to program a robot to do exactly what you want it to do when moving, because there are lots of variations that occur. So I can't explain to you very well how I can walk, but I can do it pretty well. But it turns out I can't program very well how to walk. I can instead tell the computer, this is good, this is bad, and it learns from that. Um, so let's see. So some examples here. Um, oh, machine vision. So I haven't talked much about machine vision. Um, it's an area with lots of research, and it's a hard problem in the sense of, as I mentioned, you just get these pixels and you have to comprehend them. So that's another problem that robotics, for instance, on the top there we have this ping pong playing robot. So it has to figure out where's the ping pong ball, where's my opponent, um, where's my opponent's paddle. All of those things it has to be able to pick out of the image and respond to. Um, there's an autonomous helicopter. So Peter Abiel, who's now a professor here at Stanford, or not at Stanford, I'm sorry. Um, he was at Stanford when he did this work. He is now a professor here at Berkeley. Um, sorry. Um, so one thing he did in his dissertation project was made a helicopter learn how to do tricks. Um, so for instance, it can stay totally stationary up in the air, except that it's turning around. It can fly autonomously upside down, um, which is things that people hadn't been able to figure out how to do, people hadn't been able to program helicopters to do, but by using machine learning techniques, they were able to get a helicopter to do this. You know, it's very robust, so it doesn't fall down half the time, it works. Um, so in one project here at Berkeley, um, which I'll just show you a tiny clip of, um, is this automatic towel folding robot. Um, so the towel folding robot, um, this is at 50 times speed, uh, so it takes the robot a little while. Um, but it's got this pile of towels, and it's trying to turn around, it's trying to figure out, where do I grab this? <laughs> figure it out. What is the towel like? How big is it? <laughs> Restart. <laughs> nice little pile. <laughs> so this towel, all right, it's got a different pattern. It has to figure out what's going on there. It's turning it around. Okay. Oh, beautiful. And it saw where it put it before, so it made a pile of them. Um, I'll let us fold one more thing, I think. Um, so this is sort of a simple task that, you know, you can all probably fold towels. Um, but it has to figure out all these little things that we sort of take for granted. Um, <laughs> oh, and this one's different. So here, it's a washcloth now, so it's smaller. It has to figure out, how do I respond to that? Um. <laughs> Separate file for washcloths. <laughs> idea. Um, and one thing various robotics projects have been getting into more is basically making robots that are helpful for things like folding towels. Um, there are projects about making robots that can put away the dishes or put the dishes in the dishwasher, um, which can have some messy consequences if it goes badly, but, um, but it's pretty cool. <laughs> 